again, super buddies forever, ready to begin finally the beach house. This will be a video journal showing you again how we make progress on it, let you be a part of it, and show you some tips and hints and things I do along the way until it's finished. I do apologize for the time length from the beginning of us saying this was coming. Cute little things I found in the um, pet section of the aquarium stuff to use that I think will come in handy. I won't show you the beach because it's almost done, but there'll be some tips and hints and showings along the way. Hope you enjoy this video journal. Over in the garage, we got a regular old assembly line of spray painting going on here for the project tonight and others. Most of this gold, this is a great fast drying gold, is for Valentine's area and Gigi's sign right there too. The poles to make the top placard. We got stuff for the beach, surfboard, and surprisingly this pliable plastic, this plastic paint is working really well on radio. Placards and trays for Freak to Chic. These, I put them on the boxes because then I can look up, especially in the dark when I'm painting because here it gets too hot sometimes during the day. And I can pick it up and actually look around 3D and paint it in my hand and it keeps the dust from the floor. Got some beach stuff. Wheels for the Freak to Chic cart. Priming and some things that are going to be white. Picnic basket. There's that wax or that head for the creative monster. It's going to be for the ice cream girl. Motor. And that is where that's at. That spray painting I just showed you was actually done before I did the forest, but it applied to this, so I added it in. I hope that helped you. There is lots going on today and much to show you. Hi guys! First I have a red carpet I'm trying to finish for Freak to Chic. Um, these things are super crazy, wobble over, and I just want a little entrance that makes it kind of neat to go into the event room. Uh, I will attach those later. I'm probably going to have to use glue gun and deal with it if it comes loose later. As you can see, that's how easy those fall. That's just a piece of scrap felt that I used in Gulia's thing, which is really nice because it sticks to the grass without having to attach it. It just kind of does like Velcro. A little bit of leftover trim from some costume parties we did in the past and our costumes. Of course, I'm just going to attach that. Maybe put a little gold bead of puffy paint to finish it off and that will be the entrance to the Freak to Chic. As for the Freak to Chic, I got this cart I want to work on today. Of course, we got this package of all these things we had from Lots, Barbie, and also the stuff from our opening miniature opening package from eBay. So that's just going to be glued in there in a cute way to have a cart. Over here, we have some stuff for the beach house. I'm ready to go. That's filled in and getting painted from the last video. Lots of towels, which was just a $1 store towel that's got the fray check on it. So it's really nice that if you pull on it, you're not going to get fray. You didn't have to sew those. The hem would be far too thick. Those can go with the dolls in the beach. Or we can roll some up for the accessories vendor. More little details we just got to finish for the beach and beach house. These little plastic um, goggles. I got primer on those where I just want to add a little extra color. That'll be for the rental vendor. Um, what was her name? Katie. You've seen these. I got some for the beach. Now these things need a little bit more nail polish. I see how handy nail polish is. So this one here, you can see I take it in my hand. I've done half of it is shiny by holding it here. It's dry. Now I'll be able to turn it around. Oops. Hold it to the other side and set it to dry. So that just adds a little bit of specialness and protection and it's much better than the pink. I also did put a, just a little teeny bit of Sharpie on the bottom black just to make it look a little bit more realistic. Next over here is the raft or whatever you call this. It. not a raft but it has a windsurfer that goes in here. So I've just primed a few things. I just want to add a little bit more color to it. This is also for the rental area or for playing. 
again, primed. Just want to add a little more color. If you remember from one of our earlier videos, I put my primer, my 123 Bullseye Primer, in a paint thing, a shampoo container to be just like the paint thing so I could just pop, squirt a little bit, and use it handy. The best primer ever that I swear to you. I do like to use soap when I wash the brushes with that, even though it is a water based product. And we have Lisa's ice cream cart, which has. Some accessories to add that we got from the miniatures in eBay. Add some spice that I don't want scooped ice cream. I wanted soft ice cream because we had scooped ice cream in the Scaris video and Sundays and things. So this I want to be a quick popsicle and soft serve thing. I might add just a little more up here. I did paint that part of it previously to add some more color. I would like to put a little topper of some sort that's better here. And the silver I also painted that just to make it look more like a frozen cart. The rest of it came as is. Still have not found anything in research about this piece to figure out what goes in here, maybe what goes in here. But in the meantime, I got this little plate or whatever it is. It was in a lot. At the very least, I can put on top to make that finished. And we're gonna have her, Lisa, which is a beautiful little doll. I love her see-through icy look, so she's gonna look fantastic in there is the ice cream vendor we've been working on her head which was from a great what is it called inner monster. inner monster got this as a separate piece on ebay it was yellow i primed it with that bullseye it worked good and it was dull and i probably should have left it and then i put instead i went ahead and put a piece of shiny white spray paint and it did not dry very well that's a good tip on how I spray paint things like that. But I have left it, if it doesn't, if it, it's not bad. I've left it in the hot sun for like three days and it's been baking it really well. If it doesn't fully, fully dry, I might take a little bit of glitter and put it on it, make it shiny for wherever it might be sticky. Or we'll just have to be careful, unfortunately. This thing is still sticky and probably going to go in the trash. You can see it even is sticking. It just did not work. It's sticking to my hand. So that one unfortunately is probably going to be trash. And it does leave a little black on your hands. And over here I have some netting from the rocks. I'm going to maybe make, use that to make a little design for the back of the beach. A little sign with some oars. Got this anchor, make it look like a net just for a decoration. Seen that in the background of the video? I did get that from Walmart recently, so I got that super inexpensively. I did change it up and put some stickers on the Barbie and this Barbie to cover it um, and spray painted the bottom black. It was nice to be new because they had the stickers fresh. Next, I've printed off some pictures for various signs for the beach area, and some I just threw in that are on my memory to do for other rooms. I just use picture print paper, open up a text box, and then drop a picture in it and size it to where I want after I've measured the area. Some of them I disappear the text box outline out so it won't get in the way or I can overlap them and be cheap and frugal on my ink. Um, these are some obvious that I'm going to do that in the change area. The beach ones are obvious. I, if you remember from Casta, the Green Ladies area, I didn't put her portrait in. I like to do portraits. This one, unfortunately, cut off. Not too happy with what I can find with Pharaoh yet. We don't have any good stock cartoony pictures such as this, and we want Caddy to have a picture of Pharaoh. So this is for her area just to add some color. I love having the extra colors around the area, make it more interesting. Some more ones that you can are obvious to see what will be around the beach and camping area and whatever, that's funny. This one I found for the swimming pool. I'll just add that one in there. So that'll be a nice bit of detail. Here we have some more for around the lifeguard and beach area. These I want to cut out for Karen's kissing roof so that he's kind of selfish and thinks highly of himself. So we'll cut those out like he's giving out glossies with the kissing. This one is for Wisp, 
and her sign, which I called Gigi in the spray painting video. This is she's gonna have that fortune telling booth made out of the Bratz genie castle lantern thing. So I want to have a little placard, and that's how I'm gonna use to put her name on it. She's gonna be a fortune teller. I just used a piece of trim on a pre-bought placard from Michaels, sprayed it, and set that there, and then I cut that out and put that on there. It's a picture of the box art I was able to take and just put it on there and make it fancy so that stands up. I'll show you how to cover those instead of them just being fab or just being print paper. If you want to add a little more durability or some shine, we just use some packing tape. Just cut these out separately from the piece of paper. Take a piece of packing tape. Of packing course, tape. I, no oh, packing tape. I leave room. Of course, when I pre-printed them, I tried to make them on purpose so they're smaller than the packing tape. Cut a generous portion off. Simply put it on there. Press it in real good. Get all the bubbles out. Zooming in to see you not getting the bubbles. You kind of push them out so of the way. Long. All right. And then you just take your scissors and cut. Look at that precision. <laughs> and as you can see, you're getting like a surgeon. A nicely shiny sign. That will just give it that extra oomph as it's hung up. And if you happen to scratch it with your fingernails or your jewelry or the dolls, it won't scratch the photo paper. So that's how I do those. Then I can glue gun it, tape it, or wax it right to the wall. I taught her everything she knows. <laughs> There's another way you can use this as a laminator where if you have it pre-cut perfectly, you can put a piece on the front Put a piece to the back if you were to put it on the back and then when you cut you can cut around it a little bit if you desire that look and you'll have a little edge as if it were laminated that works really good for magazines or if you just want a different look on a sign so off i will go to do the rest of these here's a little painting tip if you're not feeling so secure about painting small things a lot of people tend to go like this with their hand and that lets you not be able to control the paintbrush. So like when you're writing, you put your hand down to brace it. I learned this from a sign painter. You want to brace while you're painting, be it you put it here or hold your finger. And that makes all the difference in the world when you're trying to paint something with a very fine line. Never have your hand up in the air, no matter which direction you do it, as long as your hand is supported, you will paint much better. And That would be the first coat of that done. I'll do a second coat, and then I'll put a little bit of nail polish on it just to... Note the anchored hand. Anchored hand, what a good word for it. Always, it's such a simple little thing, but everybody wonders, how do you paint so close and so tight? That's the same when you're painting signs and when you're painting walls. Keep that wrist anchored. Okay, next on over here, set this down right here got a couple little tricks and tips that are helpful as well tricks and tips tricks and tips starting now so of course all our signs over here were done really easily because they are pretty straight got them all ready to go got this fortunes by Dejini ready to work on this sign here ready to work on what this sign this placard they know about so I'll stick that on there and then somehow I'll make these letters work on their old scrapbook stuff. 
Um, I'm short an I, but I'm going to cut that L and modify it to make it just going to ask that. <laughs> that I a, only have one I. have a strange I. language where the L's no. pronounced I. <laughs> and we know they call her Wisp, but on the San Diego Comic-Con box, they have her named as Dejini. Oh, is that I spelled it right? D-J. Dejini. So that'll be an I. So over here for more cutting tips, when you want to get around the curves, I mentioned this in one of my videos casually, but I will show you. Most people move their scissors their scissors around stuff, and that doesn't give you a neat cut. So even with these big honking scissors, you want to move the paper. Always so what I mean is, paper. you know, if you try to get your scissors in these little things, it never works. So I cut in a little bit, turn the paper, cut some more. It's a technique that's also used... And scrapbooking. And silhouetting. Silhouetting and scrapbooking, right. Exactly. Turn that paper. And then you can see how much easier it is. It's something to do with the angle and the way your scissors work. And yes, I have silhouetted people and their hair using this technique. And so as you can see, that makes that more precise. more precise. Put it against there and neater. So I hope that helps in your cutting ventures. A picture idea for cutting. Now these ones I did not put the packing tape on and I want them to look like photographs. As I said, we're going to use as pictures for Mr. Feels Good About Himself, Kieran Valentine. He's a stud. So just an idea. Instead of cutting right to it, just go about an eighth of an inch, sixteenth of an inch away from it with the white background you already have, you don't have to have a line. And keep your cut all in one one cut. Don't go like ch -ch 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 -ch. one fluid cut. One fluid cut. Oh Mr. Alex with his words that are so grand. So there now we have something that looks I've got a white bordered frame that looks more like it's very clean. A photograph. So we'll set those on his counter so he can give them away with his kisses. Another small trick use of pictures you can use any kind um, you can just put some puffy paint around them and then that makes it look like a little frame some punk driving by with their stereo <laughs> that sound effect in the background yes so that's I'll put a little marker on the edge just to get rid of that white hue but that on its own is okay and then as in I like this circle one for Scara's area for her buddy this was the technique I used for uh, Rochelle's pictures of all the Scaris girls, just use a little bit of nail polish to fill it in more like a glass frame. And just quickly, hopefully you've got printer ink that doesn't um, smudge. That's important. I put it fairly thick. Just push that away and let that dry. And that is how I made the little frames on the plate rack in Rochelle's room. If you want them thicker, you just do a few more coats, whatever you like. I hope those tips help you. And just over here, I have got all of this glued on. I got these glued on, and I've just put a little bit of puffy paint on here to finish off the edge and make it look nice. So then we can easily hold those in place and have a nice red carpet entrance to the event room. Alrighty near the end of this video journal. Got lots of stuff done, which is wonderful. This is all done, dry, ready for freak to chic. This is all done, ready for freak to chic, so we can video that soon. You'll see some of those miniatures in there, some of the other things we did. So we got a snack cart for that, which is awesome. Remember I was so excited about these pieces and the pretzels and everything. Well, the pretzels, one broke and they were still wet because they stuck together. So I'm a little disappointed in those products. Whatever sealant or, I don't know what they use to seal it. Anyway, they're still kind of tacky. Luckily, these aren't things to play with, but very pleased with that. I got, I couldn't fit fortunes in there with those lettering I have, the yellow, but this did work. Of course, the genie is what is on the San Diego Comic Con as her name. Fortunes. I did two layers of stickles. 
So although it doesn't show up as much as I want, I think we get her photo and her name at the very least. Looks good. Over here, I got a few things done. I got this scrap that came in a lot. I had a little nib there. I took it off, primed it. I'm going to use this to make a sign out of that to put near the rocks in the ocean for when the scarier reef comes. And what do we got? Finished that up from filling it with caulking, painted it green, used a little box art silhouetted nail polish and puffy paint. So we got a background surfboard. Some of these things just got just a little bit of detail to make them look really good for the rental shop. The black is all done with Sharpie, the other stuff primed and done with paint and then nail polish to seal. Some more tanks. Got the cart, I think sufficiently ready to go. The ice cream vending cart. One of the ice creams in there. Just some quickies there. Again, those firebomb pops were wet. Super disappointed in those. Up here, I added a little bit of trim as well as down there to spice it up. Use some gems as lights. Hopefully those will twinkle and the lights in there. I think I'll try and find some cones or something to put in there. Maybe some napkins. These things I've had in other rooms. They are these nail art things you get at the dollar store. It's eight for a dollar. And I took the lids off. If you see the lids, took them off, put a little bit of silicone in it and then some puffy paint of some kind for color that will dry clear later. Some sprinkles and then even the lids I use over here and I did do that in the school room I tried to explain if I didn't well enough. I just put it upside down some puffy paint and I'll tidy up these tops to make those look like little spice containers or whatever. Here's how they look when you pull them out. Good use recycling. So that is going to look fantastic for this girl here who's waiting patiently. She's got an ice cream in hand. Her headpiece is drying very well. I think another day in the sun will be ready to go. And we got some more pieces over here that are kind of jazzed up. They're ready to go and in people's hands with the ice cream and popsicles. And then the dinghy, which used to be all orange. Remember that from the sneak peek? Well, it's purple. Don't know more. Pizzazz, you see me painting. I just added a little more Sharpie. If you do use Sharpie and then use clear nail polish, you got to go on it quick, so it will smear if you linger on it too long. Jazzy up the motor with hand painting. And we just use black Sharpie and silver Sharpie to just trace in those for a little something extra. I think those are going to look great. We're getting closer and closer to showing off the beach and starting to move on to the beach house. Hope you've enjoyed this. Super Buddies Forever, subscribe and share. Thanks for watching.